Joining us now is OG Ope with stories trending around the world. I Hello, Jimmy. I'm never going to get tired of your introduction, Dr. <laughs> Abati. Tundu Abiola, I love your outfit. You look. Thank you, darling. Like a million bucks. Uh, thank Good morning, you. Not 44 five. billion? No, no not, for, so, not quite. So. Just, let's just try with just one. Just a million. One, one okay. Million. Okay. Okay. A million Will there be bucks. another birthday party today? Can you stop with the birthday party? So for, <laughs> so for me. Because I enjoyed myself yesterday. I wish you to continue. All right, no problem. So we'll continue. For me. So for it's me. what? I think Tundu worth more than the price at which Twitter was purchased. Oh well. Uh, of course. Well, of course. <laughs> the romantic <laughs> refine. Bless you. Well, all right. Good morning to you viewers. Here are some of the stories that are trending across the globe. In the United States, Bellonia Elon Musk struck a deal on Monday to buy Twitter for roughly $44 billion in a victory by the world's richest man to take over the influential social network frequented by world leaders, celebrities, and cultural trendsetters. And a New York judge on Monday held former President Donald Trump in civil contempt of court and ordered him to pay the sum of $10,000 per day until he turns over documents that have been subpoenaed by the state attorney general's office in connection to a civil probe into the Trump organization's business practices. In Japan, the country's Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare on Monday announced the passing of Kane Tanaka, the world's oldest person, according to the Guinness World Records. Tanaka was born in 1903 and survived cancer twice. She lived through a multitude of historical events, surviving two world wars and the 1918 Spanish flu, as well as the COVID-19 pandemic. She became the oldest living person in January 2019, at the age of 116 years and 28 days. Tanaka died on April 19, at the age of 119. Under sports, Cardiff City FC are seeking an 80 million pounds compensation from French club Nantes after claiming that Argentine footballer Emilio Sala's death resulted in the club being relegated from the Premier League. The claim was published in a book released on Monday titled The Truth, The Killing of Emilio Sala. Sala was due to sign for Cardiff City in January 2019 when his plane crashed into the English Channel on his way to finalizing the transfer. Finally, on our entertainment, former U.S. President Donald Trump branded Britain's TV host Pierce Morgan a fool for believing the 2020 presidential election was free and fair in a controversial interview on Morgan's new television show, Pierce Morgan Uncensored. Trump also admonished Prince Harry for being disrespectful to his country following his royal exit and said that the Queen should ban him from even visiting her in Britain. Harry is whipped. Do you know the expression I'm whipped? familiar with the phrase. I won't use the full expression. <laughs> but Harry is whipped like no person I think I've ever seen. Good I'm job. not a fan of Meghan. Yeah. I'm not a fan. And I wasn't right from the beginning. Sexy. I think poor Harry is being led around by his nose, okay? You think he's going to win? I do. I've been a very good predictor, as you know. I've predicted almost <laughs> everything. It'll end, and it'll end bad. Watch this whole debate, Ray. Right? You've been completely unflagging in your refusal to accept defeat. And you know why, though? You know why? Because if our country doesn't have fair and free elections, mm. and if our country doesn't have borders, mm. we don't have a country. Okay. We have crooked, corrupt elections. But here's what I would say to you. And I've proven it. Here's what I would say to you. I believe it was a free and fair election and that you lost. You that, don't really believe That's it. my belief. Right. Well, then you're How, a fool. However, then you're a fool. maybe I am a fool. Maybe I'm the fool in, in this conversation about And you're it, a fool and you haven't studied it. Well, Dr. Abati, your friend is back on television and he's come back with a bang. Obviously, this is going to raise his ratings, but you know I love both of them. Over to you. Well, <laughs> you are putting me yes, on the I spot. Do. You know I Knowing love that Donald Trump. Yes, Morgan yeah. is fine. I admire his industry, his style, yes. uh, his prolificity. Um, you know, writes books, writes newspaper columns. Yes. He's a superstar on television. And now he's been given this opportunity to come back. And he's returned with a bank, yeah. with a TV station that is built around him, yeah. Top TV. 
uh, which is uh, which was launched uh, yesterday uh, with Rupert Mur Murdoch mm -hmm. as the uh, spirit, you know, and the chairman behind that enterprise. And typical uh, Piers Morgan, you know, he came with a bang with an interview with uh, 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 former president of the United <laughs> States, president, president, you know, uh, Donald uh, Trump. And of course, you know, the, this has been very controversial. Yes. Typical Piers Morgan style. I know he's been criticized. I read an essay in The Guardian of the UK by, uh, I think, Martin Lawson, in which was saying, uh, Piers Morgan is the egotist in chief. That is a narcissist. He, he opened the program by even uh, making reference to uh, Nelson Mandela and that this, this new program is a long walk to the freedom of speech. And it will be an island of sanity in a world that has gone mad. <laughs> okay. People don't like him because he's boastful, but he delivers, you know, and he makes the impact. And, you know, you should expect more drama coming from that direction. But at the end of the day, there was drama yes. in that conversation with Donald Trump when he was trying to tell Donald Trump that you, you lost the uh, 2020 election, presidential election in November in the United States. But we see that... Uh, you know, President Trump still has a withdrawal syndrome. He's still insisting that he won, and he was rigged out. And when he could not, two narcissists, of course, if you like, <laughs> the critics will say, and encountering each other. Yeah. At the end of the day, Donald Trump walked out, calling, uh, you know, Piers Morgan a fool. So you are a fool. You go and uh, <laughs> do your study to learn. Uh, but Dr. Vatican, so, <laughs> Donald Trump just <laughs> give up on this election thing. Never. 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 Uh, who does television yeah. like his politics, like his show business, yeah. you know, and he continues to make impact. I think ITV, you know, uh, where he spent six years as an anchor, well, they must be feeling a bit uncomfortable, yeah. I guess, because their ratings, the money, sh their money showed ratings dropped. Good right. Yes. Yes. yes, the it's moment, the same. Yeah. you know, there's Morgan the there. Yeah. Yeah. The and Megan uh, Marco, the Duchess of Success, you know, uh, who had issues. Uh, with Piers Morgan, uh, we'll see that Piers Morgan is back. Yes. <laughs> and he's back for good. Yeah. <laughs> so what caused the fight and what heightened the interview was Nigel Farage. When Piers Morgan announced, and Nigel Farage works on uh, GB News, when Piers Morgan announced that he was going to interview Donald Trump, so my, Nigel Farage wrote a dossier to Donald Trump about all the times Piers Morgan used to abuse him in the papers <laughs> and sent it to Trump. Oh, no. So Trump read that before the interview. So Trump was ready for him, and that was why they clashed. Right. So Nigel Farage went back on GB News and was proud about it. I was boastful. I was like, yeah, I set him up. He's an no, idiot. No, but you know, he, no, it's well, TV gold. Everybody's going to watch it. It will have ended that way. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> going to watch that. It's a Donald Trump. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, Donald Trump was boasting that he was going to make Pierce Morgan's ratings. It was going to... Put it up, and he did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great things yeah. go. Good television. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, all right. We'll take another story. In Nigeria, well, the governor of River State, Yesom Wike, during a consultation visit to Kaduna State over his presidential ambition on Monday, donated 200 million naira to victims of banditry in the state. Well, the governor, while pledging the sum, said insecurity will be a thing of the past if he is elected president of Nigeria and urged PDP delegates from the state to support him during his presidential primaries. While well, some Nigerians have taken to social media to share mixed reactions. Let's take some tweets. This is from Arthur, who wrote, Wike, a serving governor, has made donations in the region of 500 million naira this far while on the campaign trail. And literally, no one is asking where the money is coming from or whether it was appropriated. The good governance advocates are otherwise occupied, apparently. Well, Crystal Bill wrote, Dear, our able governors of the 36 states, may God bless you all in Jesus' name. Amen. For the ones that donate money to the IDPs in other states, and I pray that from the same pocket where that is coming from, also extend to the officially financial displaced salary workers Owed. Amen, I mean, no. amen. This is such a amen, huge no. prayer, especially coming from River State, where <laughs> all of these salaries are being owed. Don't know, Abiola, what's going on? I haven't the foggiest idea. I don't know if this is a show up 
one-upmanship because Ashiwaju Tinobu went to Kaduna yes. and donated 50 million. 50 million. So I'm not sure if that's what this is, but that question about the blurred lines between personal donations and donating from state gov um, coffers is legitimate. And that has to be addressed specifically by Governor Wiki. I, do, I wouldn't think for him that it's something to ignore. I think he does need to address that. And for me, the generosity is important, the largesse is important, yes, but what is more important is the focus being put on what is happening in Kaduna, the horrors that people are experiencing there. For me, that should really be the sole focus here. And what each aspirant will do if they ever get the chance to be president of this country, to ensure that come next election cycle, people are not going to Kaduna to give donations. Because as we've seen in Nigeria, things could very easily become entrenched. One thing, once something takes hold in this country, it's actually really hard to shake it off. This time in four years, we must not be seeing donations to victims of terrorists, for crying out loud. That really, for me, is the point. Right. Oh. Dr. Abad. Well, Governor Wike was in uh, Kaduna uh, for consultations over his uh, presidential ambition. Before then, uh, he had been also to uh, Benue stage, you recall, where he also made uh, a donation, and now he went to Kaduna. Now, I think it's legitimate to ask the question, the money that is donating all over the place, he and other presidential aspirants, where is that money coming from? If it is his uh, personal funds, oh, that's perfect, that's nice. Whatever job he has done in his life, that he can keep donating millions all over the place, that will fine. as long as it is not the money that is meant for the payment of the salaries of, uh, of uh, uh, civil servants in River State or uh, pension funds meant for pensioners whom nobody pays attention to in Rivers and elsewhere. As long as that is not the case, well, he can spend his money uh, the way he likes. You know, he's a philanthropist, so he's, he's a philanthropist and all of that. <laughs> okay, but if any raised a point earlier yeah. on, on this particular issue, that he hopes, and I hope I'm quoting Emmanuel Efeni correctly, that Wike is not trying to emulate a previous governor of River State who was so generous, you know, who was so kind that uh, he, he became known as Governor Donatus. <laughs> so I, hope, I remember that. I hope I that Wike that. is not becoming another Governor Donatus. But he has serious competition. The other day, uh, Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Chinumbu of the APC donated one billion naira to the Lagos State uh, University. So 200 million, if it is his money, he has not started. He has to up the game. <laughs> <laughs> However, he made some intelligent points at that occasion. Yes, he went to consult, he went to commiserate, and all of that. He said Kaduna used to be a glorious city. And uh, Kaduna was a place where every major leader in the North had a home, and is, is right yes. on those two scores. Kaduna used to be a major industrial hub and commercial center for the entire North. It was also, you know, a cosmopolitan center that accommodated people from all groups, whether from the South or from the North or from the East. Kaduna was home to everybody. And he lamented the fact that today, part of the tragedy of Nigeria is that Kaduna is no longer the place that people want to come to because it has become the hotbed of terrorism Banditry, chaos, violence, confusion. The only thing the governor of Kaduna State, Nasir Rufa, has not done is to emulate his brother governor in uh, uh, Benue State and start weeping on television. We are in a place where governors now weep, parents it's weep. Very sad. Because they have no, they, they, are, they are their wits end as to what to do. So on those other points, I think that, you know, Governor Yeson Wike was spot on to say that part of the challenge is to rescue Nigeria. And I'm quoting him directly. He says Nigeria needs to be rescued, Kaduna needs to be rescued, and that's why he wants to be president. Whether he is a man to do it or not is another question that is open to the electorate to decide. Well, but that 200 million naira, the, the 1 billion, and all of this, maybe there are some departments of uh, government. Oh, you following this presidential, presidential aspirants around. When you uh, give the money, they say give tax to the Nigerian state. Tell us where this money is coming from. Maybe that is something we may have to consider yeah. when in the future we review the Electoral Act yeah. of Nigeria. But those type of donations are not usually tasks, right? Mm. You, you can't pay tasks. Yeah, but where is the money coming from? So, yeah, just to find so, out. Right? So I, I think it should even be taxed in the first place. If we want to really build a serious country, in a country where tax to GDP ratio is very low, less than 10, one of the lowest in Africa, 
I think it's because of things like this we should enforce that. And I think the best form of screening should be all political parties should also ask them for their tax return political candidates. You're asking where the governor is getting the money from. That's I think it's simple. There's an asset declaration form he signed before he became governor, isn't it? Take that asset declaration form and juxtapose it with any donations he's made and ask the question, is it his money? There's an asset declaration form. So let us go back to that. You see, why we have a very corrupt country is because we all permit corruption. We look at it and we laugh. Hey, 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 hey. box of his story. He donated money at the expense of the commonwealth of the people. Yes. So take his asset declaration form. It's as simple as that. There's code of conduct there. Juxtaposing with what he's been donating around, was he worth that or worth more than that when he got into power? Because he has not done any paid job. Because I'm not sure in this country as a governor you can still run around do your private business. Is it possible? No. Uh -huh. So take his other declaration for and juxtapose and across all presidential candidates. And then it's a OG, we have an appalling country where people don't collect taxes. Why? With all the billionaires we have in Nigeria, less than 20, 200 people pay over 20 million naira income tax in this country. Mm. And people are donating billions. They are donating millions. And we are all sitting, you know, clapping for them. Then, hey, okay, okay, okay. Very fine. So Indeed. let's not deceive ourselves. Because, you see, self-deceit is one of the greatest problems of Nigeria. And apart from that, speaking about Kaduna, news flash. He's going to over a month. People that have been kidnapped, though. They are still there. Mm -hmm. We must release them. Yes. Because it looks as though we have forgotten about them. Because that's what we normally do in this country. We've forgotten about them. So rather than donating money to Kaduna, I think we should raise more awareness as regards the people that are kidnapped, that their families are having heart attack and heartache now. Well, Rufai, in the absence of uh, evidence as to the source of the uh, money, can we assume that uh, Governor Wiki is going to take the money from the same people who bought presidential form for him? Maybe. <laughs> oh, because goodness. that's the fashion these days, mm -hmm. isn't it? Maybe. Well, all right. But you remember what President Olusha Gwambasu just said about anybody that buys you presidential form? I don't, said by, don't vote for them. Yeah. <laughs> we shall take our final story. Well, a yet to be identified policeman serving at the state police command headquarters in Lagos is said to have gone into hiding after allegedly shooting two businessmen and killing them on the spot during a birthday celebration. The policeman is said to have been under the influence of alcohol and became overjoyed during the birthday party when he suddenly opened fire to mark the occasion. The victims have been identified as Chikere Obieshi and Odinaka, both friends of the policeman. The state police public relations officer Benjamin Houdin confirmed the incident and said the Lagos State Police Commissioner has ordered an investigation into the incident. The issue of a stray bullet. Dr. Abati, yeah. this is well, so sad. This, this is a clear demonstration of uh, the incompetence of the kind of people who are given arms and ammunition. And you recall, during the NSAS protest, one of the major demands of the protesters is that these policemen serving us in Nigeria should be subjected to psychiatric tests. We are just seeing nobody, the same thing every day. Nobody I don't know has done that to. And then you give these people weapons. And then a policeman goes to a party, a birthday party. He gets inebriated. And we were told that he wanted to salute the celebrants. Yes. And he started shooting in an enclosure. I mean, isn't that a, a case of a madness? Madness, complete madness. insanity. Yes. And then he ended up killing people. We understand that it's on the run. Look, there's something they call fire. Uh, the police, they are always talking about standard operating procedures. They only remember those standard operating procedures when they are issuing press releases, mm. when something like this happens. Look, once the, uh, the SSS detail that was with me, he saw a policeman carrying his gun carelessly. You know, he, told, he went to the guy and said, no, this is not how your gun should be. When you are not, uh, you know, using the gun, you have to put the gun like this. I don't remember the technicalities, mm. maybe some latch or something, and then you keep the so that there will be no accidental discharge. Apparently, this particular policeman, he doesn't know that protocol. He probably, we say we have police training colleges. What do they teach them there? They can't even handle firearms. They are carrying a dangerous weapon around in a, at a birthday party, and he's saying he's saluting, wasting bullet. That policeman should be apprehended and dealt with. Immediately. I mean, it's an indication of the police force we've built. Poorly trained, poorly remunerated. That's why all of this is happening. In the first place, in the same country, which police officer goes to salute a private individual? 
in a birthday party. I've lost Why it. Why do you have a gun with you yeah, when you so, drink? How so can which, you be which drunk police officer and have a gun? Even dr is drunk yes. on his duty on or with a gun. Yeah, that, that's too so many, in the same too country, so when I keep saying that there's a high level of insanity, yeah. you think we are joking. You know, we are mad. This is mutually assured destruction. This is so sad. We are, it's a laughable matter, but it's hurting me no, because really if a man so can't cry, he laughs. Yeah. Look at them in the prime yes. of their lives. Yeah. In the just prime of, you just kill people for nothing. Well, and in the end, they say police is your friend. That's the issue. Well, may their souls rest in peace. Thank you all for your analysis. Thank you very much. That's all I have for you on what's trending today. I'll see you tomorrow.